Welcome to our lecture online. How do we know that we're dealing with a perfect square when we see a trinomial? Well, the trick is as follows. We take a look at the numerical coefficient of the first term and the numerical coefficient of the last term to see if they are perfect squares in themselves. It turns out that 25 is 5 squared and 16 is 4 squared, so when you see that, there's a possibility that that trinomial may be a perfect square. We can factor as such. Same over here. 16 is 4 squared and 81 is 9 squared, so again there's a possibility that that may be a trinomial in disguise of a perfect square. Now, let's go ahead and see how we would then figure out if that is indeed a perfect square and we can factor it. So we take the square root of the number here, which is the square root of 25, so we take the square root of 25 and we multiply that times the square root of 16 and then we multiply that times 2. Remember, if the middle term is twice the, first, the square root of the first term plus times the square root of the second term, then we have ourselves a perfect square. So this can be written as 5 times 4 times 2, which is equal to 40. And sure enough, that is equal to the middle term, so therefore we can factor this. So this can then be written as 5x quantity squared plus 40x plus 4 quantity squared. So therefore, this could be then be factored as 5x plus 4 quantity squared. If you're not sure, go ahead and multiply it out and you will get the initial term. One way to think of it is multiply 5 times 4, which is 20 times 2. If you get the middle term, you're good to go. Same over here. We can realize here that 4 which is the square root of 16, multiply times 9, which is the square root of 81, times 2, this is equal to 4 times 9, which is 36, times 2, which is 72, and notice we have a 72 in the middle. However, because of the negative sign, this will then be factored as follows. This can be written as 4x quantity square minus 72x and plus 9 quantity square, so this can be factored as 4x minus 9 quantity squared minus because we have a minus there. And again, to check real quick, you multiply 4 times a minus 9, which is minus 36, times 2 gives you minus 72, which is the middle term of the original trinomial. And that is how you recognize that you're dealing with a perfect square. In other words, you recognize that this is equal to this when we take the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, well, the square root of the first term times the square root of the second term times 2, and we get the middle term, and that way we know we can factor it in this way. And that is how it's done.